Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt from start to finish. If you've been tuning into my channel, you know that I've been doing quite a bit of quilting lately and I've been getting a lot of questions from lovely viewers like you asking me, where do you start if you want to get quilting? What is a great beginner friendly pattern? Well, that is what we're going to be doing today. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple, very easy, beginner friendly, small, Quilt. I'm going to show you everything from arranging your fabrics to piecing them together to creating your quilt sandwich to actually quilting your quilt. For this tutorial, I am going to be working with a charm pack of five inch squares. So uh, in addition to a charm pack, you're also going to need about a, I would say to be safe, a half a yard of fabric for your binding. This is scraps left over from another quilting project that I had and it's just a really fun coordinating fabric that I think will really bring this project together. So there's that. And then the backing fabric. Now, when it comes to quilting, backing fabric requires the most yardage. So, uh, you know, if you are on a budget, you can certainly use an old flat bed sheet. You can franken piece together fabric scraps. The good thing about backing is that it's on the wrong side of the quilt, so no one has to see it if you don't want them to. You can get really creative, but for this project, I'm gonna be using some simple unbleached muslin fabric. And again, this was left over from another quilt project. Um, for this project in particular, I am I'm going to be working with at least I think I think I have a yard in here I definitely have more again I have scraps in my stash so if this right here isn't enough I can definitely frank and piece those together but I would say if you're gonna go out and buy fabric get at least two yards for your backing fabric um, if you have any leftover you can always incorporate that into another project which is really cool that's how you build your stash uh, and your scraps and you can always work those into new projects which is which is, let's face it, half the fun of quilting is working with your scraps and creating something entirely new. So that's it for fabric. Um, but the most, probably like one of the key features of a quilt is batting. And I have this batting right here. It's by Mountain Mist. It's 100% polyester. And again, batting comes in many different blends of material. So you have your polyester blend, you have your cotton blend. I've used batting that has silk and bamboo blend. It really comes down to the fabric that you're using, but if you're just using regular quilting cotton, some polyester or regular cotton batting is fine, uh, especially if you're just getting started. So again, this one I picked up off of Amazon for about $13. Um, you know, it's washable, it can take a lot of wear and tear, and it's crib size, so 45 inches by 60 inches. Uh, and I will leave links to all of these materials down below where you can find them. The other thing that you're going to need for this project is obviously a sewing machine. You're also gonna need a cutting mat, a quilting ruler, and a rotary cutter to cut out your fabric. Again, our quilt is gonna be very, very simple. We are not going to be cutting up our charm pack squares. We're just gonna be sewing the squares together. But I will say you will need a quilting ruler, a rotary cutter, and a cutting mat to cut out your binding. So make sure you have all that on hand. Last but not least, you'll also need an iron to press your seams and a seam ripper for the inevitable mistakes that we're going to make. Uh, again, if you make a mistake, don't be hard on yourself. You're new, you're a beginner. Be patient with yourself. If you make a mistake, it's just fabric with your handy dandy seam ripper. Just unpick your stitches and do it again. All right, my friends, once you have all of your materials gathered, it's time to get quilting. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, let's go. We are currently on the floor of my craft room, exciting. And the reason I am on my floor is because we're gonna use it as a design wall uh, to make our, to start making our quilt. Um, you can certainly use a dining room table. You can use a kitchen island. You can use a, a design wall. Uh, I have one over here, but for all intents and purposes, I know not everyone has a design wall. Mine is quite small. I honestly prefer working on my floor. If you flip through your charm pack, you'll notice that there are some darks, there are some 
medium shades and there are some lighter shades. So the first step is to go through your charm pack and separate the lights from the darks from the medium shades. And then we'll start arranging our fabric from there. Looking at my pile, I noticed that I have mostly darks and half the amount of mediums and half the amount of lights. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna combine my lights and mediums together. So now I have an equal pile of darks and an equal pile of lights and darks together. Your mileage may vary, do whatever feels right to you, but from my personal preference, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to checker, I'm gonna checker everything. So I'm gonna have a, a light and a dark and a light and a dark, and then for the next row, I'm gonna do a dark and a light and a dark and a light. But one thing that I wanna point out is that typically I don't like to have two of the same prints together or two of the same colors together. So I am going to mix and match this to my liking and you should certainly do the same, you know? Whatever makes you happy, have fun with this experiment. You know, if it helps to just spread everything out, by all means, go for it. Um, again, play, have fun, and the world's your oyster. I have finished arranging my squares and yeah, this is what is making me the most happy. Uh, you can see I kind of started with some pinks at the top and kind of faded into the blues down here, uh, casually alternating between lights and darks and mediums uh, just to get a nice mix. Charm packs traditionally come with about 42 squares. So ideally you should have six squares going on one side and seven squares going on the other side for a total of 42 squares. So now that I have all of my squares arranged and I'm happy with them, I'm gonna start piecing them together. And the way we're gonna start piecing our quilt together is to go row by row. So I am gonna start at this row right here and start pinning these together at the edge, like so. But before we get sewing, one thing that I strongly recommend that you do, especially if you're sewing on the floor and you have a pet, um, you can accidentally stumble on your layout over here and things can get mixed up. Grab your smartphone or a camera, whatever you have on hand and take, just take a quick photo. Just so in case anything gets mixed up, you can easily refer back to your photo and put things back to where they were. Once I have one row of squares pinned together, I'm gonna to come over to my sewing machine and start stitching each square together at a quarter of an inch seam. Once we have our first row of squares sewn together, we're gonna to go over to the ironing board and press our seams. When you're pressing your seams, typically you wanna to press to the dark side. Uh, if you don't have a dark or light side, do your best to press your seams all the same direction. All right, we have our first row of squares pieced and pressed, and now we're ready to move on to the other rows. So we're gonna repeat the same steps that we did for this row for all the other rows of our quilt top. Now that we have our squares sewn into strips, we are going to take each strip consecutively and <laughs> sew them together. So I'm gonna place this strip right sides together with the next strip below it. And you can pin them together, but we're gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these strips together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Remember how I said to sew your seams in the same direction? Well, that is going to help us out with this next step. So you see when you, uh, right now I have two strips with right sides together, but because they're reversed, the seam on one strip is now facing that way or pressed in that direction. And the seam on the other strip is pressed in that direction. So that's gonna help us align our seams perfectly. I don't know how you can see that, but if you lie the pressed portions on top of each other and kind of like squeeze it between your fingers, you're gonna feel those seams snap into place. And that will ensure that your seams are perfectly aligned. So let me do that again. I don't know, I'm gonna try and zoom in as best as I can, but 
Line them on top and then take your take the fabric between your thumb and forefinger and slide the seams into place and you'll feel that it's like a subtle snap. It's like a subtle little snap. There we go. And now our seams are perfectly aligned and you can take a pin and pin that in place. And we're gonna do that for all of our seams here. And if, you're, if your stitch lines aren't perfectly aligned, that is completely okay. Quilting cotton is very forgiving. It has a little bit of give to it. So you can kind of stretch your fabric gently into place. But let's say both of your seams are pressed going in the same direction when they're lying together. It, that, that's completely okay. You can certainly just eyeball it. And you know, if it's, if it's slightly misaligned, it's not the end of the world. Again, you're just getting into it. This is practice. Practice makes perfect. So yeah, once all your seams are pinned in place, let's get sewing. Okay, next up is once again to press our seams open. And you'll probably wanna do this using a, <laughs> a, a regular sized ironing board and iron, but for this tutorial, this will do. guys, I am about to piece the last strip to my quilt top. And if you're doing the same, you're almost done with your quilt top too. So yay, it's so exciting. Um, and yeah, because we're not doing any crazy cutting, fabric cutting or, you know, fancy piecing techniques, this type of quilt comes together super fast. I mean, if I wasn't filming and recording, I could have this quilt top done easily in like a half an hour. So if you're looking for holiday gifts or quick birthday gifts, or you wanna make something for charity or whatnot, uh, this is definitely a go-to project, you know? Because again, like charm packs, they're not that expensive. I think they go for about maybe $10, $11 US, depending where you look. Um, and yeah, again, they, they're just super quick and easy to whip up. So, all right, I'm gonna piece this last strip to my quilt top and then we're gonna make a quilt sandwich. And if you need to stop and adjust your fabric, that's totally fine. Take your time, be patient. Thing I love about this machine though, it goes super, super fast. <clears throat> Making sure my seams are locked together. And again, if they're not, if your seams aren't perfectly aligned, it's not the end of the world. You can always zhuzh things into place with, with quilting cotton. I am gonna give this a quick press and then we're gonna go and make our quilt sandwich. All right, now it's time to assemble our quilt sandwich. So I have my backing, we're gonna start with that. And I would advise to make sure that your backing is pressed as well because any creases or folds or wrinkles can result in folds or wrinkles when you are, <laughs> when you're actually quilting the piece. So make sure that it's nice and pressed. Then we're gonna grab our batting and lay that on top. Um, this you don't have to worry about pressing, but you know. Uh, and as you can see, this is slightly larger than my backing, which is completely okay. And we're gonna grab our quilt top and lay that down smack dab in the middle, like so. Beautiful, and you know, you can get down on your hands and knees and smooth this out. And again, you can totally do this on your kitchen table, countertop, dining room table. I'm just using the floor because it's easy and convenient for me, but do what's best for you. Next, we're gonna grab our basting pins and you can get these easily on Amazon. And what basting pins are, basting pins are essentially safety pins with a slight bend in them to make it easy to 
dip in or hook in under all three layers of fabric and back out again. Uh, you can also use basting spray. Basting pins are just a personal preference, so use whatever you have handy. And taking our basting pins and starting from around the center, we're just gonna start pinning our quilt sandwich together. I'm gonna grab a couple of these. And you can do these at random, every other square. Just keep it nice and even, if you will. And what basting your quilt does is it keeps your quilt sandwich together when you're quilting it and prevents things from shifting around. Now, just to make our lives a little bit easier, let's trim our sandwich down, leaving, I would say like anywhere from like an inch and a half to two inches overlap from, or overhang from your backing and batting. Now, to quilt our quilt, we're simply going to top stitch a quarter of an inch away from all of our seams. I recommend using a walking foot for this step to help feed the fabric of your quilt sandwich through the machine evenly. If you don't have a walking foot, you can use a standard presser foot, but you may encounter tucks like this. But if this happens, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. After you wash your quilt for the first time, it'll barely be noticeable. So go slow and take your time, making sure all your fabric layers are flat and even. You can even roll your quilt sandwich up on itself along the harp or throat of your machine to make things more manageable. When you're done quilting your quilt sandwich, remove any basting pins and trim off the excess batting and backing fabric. Now it's time to bind our quilt. We're almost done, everyone. All right, now we're gonna cut our binding pieces. And sorry guys, the late day sun is shining through my, my blinds. Uh, but yes, so here I have about maybe a quarter of a yard and that is more than enough than we need for our tiny, teeny tiny little quilt. Okay, so we have width of fabric folded together. We have selvage to selvage. Um, I'm gonna fold this again one more time. So the fold to the selvage like so, and then rotate this like such. And you know, you wanna make sure things are relatively even. However, if your edges are not perfectly aligned, that is perfectly fine because we're going to true things up. So I'm gonna align things up here on my cutting mat, making sure that my folds are at least aligned with the lines on the cutting mat. Um, I'm gonna grab my ruler. Whatever quilting ruler you have is fine. Uh, I am currently using a two and a half inch by uh, 18, what is this? 14 inch by two and a half inch ruler. Um, which is perfect because we're going to be cutting two and a half inch strips. So I am just going to true up that edge right over here, like so. And if this is your first rodeo using a rotary cutter, please, please, please be careful. If you're not using your rotary cutter, make sure the safety is on. Um, and if you're using your rotary cutter, be careful. Um, so because I'm using a two and a half inch ruler and I'm sort of ambidextrous, I am going to leave my ruler where it is. Um, and that just shifted, but that's fine. And cut a two and a half inch strip like so. And I think for this project, we only need four strips, but because I don't have much yardage left, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out as many strips as I can, because I can always use that for another project, right? Am I right? Yeah. Okay, got six strips out of that. Definitely more than enough. Um, and I am just gonna line these up and unfold these. So I have my selvages here, like so. I can even just lay them on top like so. And I'm just gonna cut those selvages off. And yeah, just, you know, rel making sure things are relatively straight. Like so, I can just chuck that in. What you're gonna do is take one strip and lie it down horizontally. If you're using a print, make sure the print is facing up, facing you. And then you're gonna take a second strip. The print must be facing down and lie it on top of the horizontal strip. So you have an L or a right angle right now. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this over to your sewing machine and draw a diagonal line from this point to this point. You may find it helpful to pin this in place and also take a ruler and draw a line like so 
to help guide your needle across. And that in turn will create a bias fold like that. And then you'll press it and cut off your extra fabric. And you're going to repeat these steps for every subsequent strip. So let's get started. And I'm just gonna lower my needle onto that line that I just drew and then slowly follow that line all the way to the edge. And there we go. I've been doing this for a while, so I can kind of eyeball it, but you know, if you need to draw that diagonal line, by all means, go for it. So I'm gonna lower my needle and then find that point right under how you can see. I'm gonna find the point right there, place my fabric on top, and then just keep my finger where that point is, where I know it's gonna be. And then just so, keep my eye on the needle and just guide my finger towards the needle. And then obviously take your finger away and voila. And when you're done sewing your strips together, you wanna to take some scissors or your rotary cutter and cut off the excess fabric, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance away from your stitching. Okay, now that we have our strips sewn together, we are going to not only press our seams to one side, like so. but we are also, we're going to fold and press our binding in half, like so. And I had to pull out the big guns, guys. <laughs> I pulled out my bigger iron because I had to press my, my backing before, so now I've switched to a larger iron. To attach the binding to your quilt, begin from the center of any side. Leave a generous 10 inch tail, line up the raw edges of your binding with the front edge of the quilt and secure it with some pins. Now, using a regular presser foot, sew the binding to the quilt with a quarter inch seam allowance. Continue sewing along the edge, stopping about a quarter inch away from the corner. Now, pivot your quilt 45 degrees and sew diagonally towards and off the corner. This will create a neat, crisp, mitered corner. Okay guys, this part is a little tricky, but bear with me. The more you do it, the more second nature it will become. Lift the binding strip up, creating a 45 degree angle with the corner of the quilt. Now, fold the binding back down so that its raw edge aligns with the next edge of the quilt. The binding should be perpendicular to the edge you've just sewn. You'll have a neat diagonal fold at the corner. Pin the binding in place to keep it secure, then start sewing along the next edge of your quilt. Repeat these steps for all four corners of your quilt. Like I said, it might take a bit of practice to get your corners looking perfect, but once you get the hang of it, it adds a really nice finish to your quilt. After you turn the last corner, stop sewing when you're about 10 inches away from where you started. Trim the excess binding, making sure it overlaps the starting point two and a half inches, or however wide you cut your binding fabric. Okay, remember how we created our binding? Well, we're gonna repeat those steps here. Open up both ends of the binding, lay one end over the other, right sides facing, careful not to twist. You can mark a diagonal line from corner to corner to help you, or you can just eyeball it like I'm going to do here, where they overlap. Sew along this line and trim the excess fabric. Refold the binding, pin in place, and complete sewing the remaining gap. If you made it this far, congratulations. You are in the home stretch. We are almost done with our quilt. Um, and that is 
just tacking our binding down to the back of our quilt using a whip stitch. And you know, if you don't know how to do a whip stitch, I will leave a link to a tutorial for that in the ether up here or a link to it in the description box down below, but super, super easy, very basic stitch. And you know, you're gonna go all the way around. I'll try and insert some video here so you can see how I do my mitered corners. Uh, you know, it's, it takes a little practice, you know, if you don't get those mitered corners perfect with enough practice, the more you do this, the better you'll get. So just keep at it. If it's not entirely perfect, don't worry about it. And again, for steps like these, I like to put on a good audiobook or a podcast and just chill and relax and enjoy finishing my quilt. <laughs> and that, my friends, is all there is to making a quilt. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and inspired you to make your first quilt, guys. It is so much fun like yeah it's it's great i love it so much and i hope you love it too um so if you haven't already and again if you like this video leave a thumbs up like subscribe do all the things you know the drill uh consider becoming a member to unlock some bonus features and what else what else and if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below i'll do my best to answer them and until the next video happy making and i'll see you next time bye